Hello, I'm Beth Crosskopf and I'm going to demonstrate cleansing a wound and applying a simple sterile dressing. I have a physician's order for my patient, Mrs. John A. Lewis. I'm in Mrs. Lewis's room now. The door's closed. The privacy curtains have been pulled. I've just given myself a one minute hand wash. So I'm going to show you the way I would really change a dressing on an actual patient. Hello, Mrs. Lewis. My name is Beth Crosskopf, and I need to change your surgical dressing. Would that be all right with you? Before I begin, would you state your first name, middle initial, last name, and your date of birth? And I'll check the identification band to be sure I have the correct patient. Uh, Mrs. Lewis, uh, may I lower your head just a little bit so it'll be a bit easier for us to change your dressing? And then I'm going to raise the head of your, or your entire bed up. Okay, is that comfortable? All right, you're going to see me just get some supplies ready at the very beginning. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is to put on a pair of gloves, and I'm just going to lower the blankets and take a look at your dressing, if I may. Um, I have already checked. I have um, all my equipment gathered. I have excellent lighting, and of course, I provided for privacy and the correct identification of my patient. I'm just going to lower your sheets here a little bit, and um, I'll keep you kind of covered here between your legs here as I change your dressing. And I'm just going to raise your gown up here and uh, move the gown up high enough so that my hand isn't apt to brush it as I'm changing the dressing. Um, before I remove the old dressing, I'd like to go over and get my trash bag and um, some tape. And what uh, I'm going to do is to open my trash bag. I can either put it on Mrs. Lewis's bed beside her or I can tape it here to the side of the over the bed table so I have a place to put her used dressing. I need to cuff the bag so when I discard it I won't ever have to reach inside the bag where used dressing is. And I'm going to tape that bag here just to the very end of the table so it'll be very easy to discard of her old dressing and then the sponges that I'm going to use to clean her abdomen. Uh, do you have any questions, Mrs. Lewis, about your dressing change? I'm going to put a third piece of tape here. Sometimes those moist dressings are just a little heavy, so I have my trash bag ready. Um, I'm next going to measure the tape while uh, Mrs. Lewis has her old dressing on, and I'm going to put my strips of tape here on the back of my table, so hopefully they won't uh, get tangled up with any of my dressing supplies. And I'm going to turn one end of my tape over about a quarter of an inch, and it'll just make it easier for the next nurse to change the dressing so he or she won't have to uh, scrape tape off Mrs. Lewis's skin. And I'm also checking the date and time on Mrs. Lewis's present dressing, and I can see that it was last changed yesterday at 10.20 a.m. Uh, by Mrs. Cope. All right, I'm going to uh, put on a pair of clean gloves, and I'm actually going to loosen the tape. Uh, your uh, procedure checklist says that you can do this with your bare fingers if you like. I prefer to uh, w wear gloves. And the first thing I'm going to do is loosen the tape away from me. So I'm not apt to roll that dressing underneath the wrist of my hands as I'm working. And of course, on a living person, I'd be really careful to stabilize the skin and watch for signs of discomfort. Um, I've already checked Mrs. Lewis is very comfortable. She hasn't needed any pain medication. So I tell her just to keep her arms at her side. And if she needs to cough or sneeze, if she'll turn her head and uh, cover her mouth. Uh, to remove the old dressing, I'm going to grasp it in the center, lift it off, and I've checked the chart. I know she has a Penrose drain, so I need to very carefully remove that dressing without pulling out or advancing the Penrose drain. And I can see there's absolutely no drainage on the abdominal dressing. My next step is to study the sterile surgical site that was under the abdominal dressing. And I need to remove the remaining gauze by touching only the outermost corner so I'm never reaching over her incision or over the drain. So I'm just going to loosen the drain sponges 
and in a work around her abdomen, removing and going around so I'm never reaching over that sterile incision. And if any of these dressings were uh, adhered to the incision, I would just loosen it with a little bit of sterile normal saline. And I'm going to inspect my uh, dressings away from Mrs. Lewis's face, and I can see that she had a small amount of sanguineous drainage um, on the 4x4s right over her incision. So I'm going to just discard the old dressing in my plastic bag, and now I'm going to remove my clean uh, gloves uh, by touching palm to palm, dirty to dirty, and clean to clean. I'll just invert those gloves and drop them here in the bag. Now I've got um, her abdomen exposed, so that's a sterile field. I have to watch at all times. My next step is going to be just to make sure that my over-the-bed table is absolutely dry before I lay any of her sterile supplies on the top of the table. And I brought my supplies in, and I'm going to lay them out in the order that I use them. So I'll have my gloves, I'll have my super sponges I'm going to use to clean the wound, sterile 4 by 4s to dress the incision, drain sponge to cover the 1-inch Penrose drain, and the abdominal dressing here on the side of the table. I'm also going to need some sterile normal saline to pour over the super sponges to clean the drain. And before I start to open those supplies, I like to take a minute and really pause and look at the incision and do a very careful assessment before I continue cleansing and changing the dressing. And I can see that she has a lower abdominal midline incision and it's secured with 10 cat gut sutures with very short tails. She has uh, about a three-quarter inch Penrose drain exiting from a stab wound in the left lower quadrant of the abdomen and it's secured with a safety pin. There's about a quarter inch ring of redness or erythema around the incision and the Penrose drain which is normal. Her skin's in excellent condition. There are no blisters, no redness from underneath the transport tape and her skin is very clean so this wound is not going to require extensive cleaning. Um, at this point, um, I need to sanitize my skin. Your um, procedure book said to wash hands, but I don't have a sink in the room where I can wash my hands and still keep uh, an eye on uh, Mrs. Lewis's wound. So I'm just going to use some alcohol-based hand cleaner and rub that in until it's dry. And you'll see on the bedside table, I have a new one liter bottle of sterile normal saline. And if I'm going to cleanse a wound, it's important that I clean it uh, with a solution that's at body temperature. Since cleaning a wound can cool it and the cooling of the granulation tissue can delay healing. So I'm going to keep my wet um, super sponges moistened with the saline right on the corner of my over the bed table so I'm not apt to drip uh, any moisture on my other dressings. All right, I'm going to just reach over and get my dressing supplies and I'm going to lay them out. So the first thing that I'm going to have are my sterile gloves. I'm going to put right here on the end. I next have uh, a package of super fluff sponges. I'm going to lay right here behind the saline. My next supply that I need is going to be a 4x4 gauze sponge. One package of those will be fine. She has an incision maybe three and a half inches long. I have one package of drain sponges and I have uh, an abdominal pad that I'm going to put on the very end of my table. Now to open these supplies, I'm going to come around my trash can and I'm going to do what's called fronting the field. So at all times as I'm opening my packages, I can keep Mrs. Lewis's sterile abdominal incision in my field of vision. And when I open my supplies, I need to think about how I open the packages. I prefer to open a package taking the flap away from me with my right hand. Uh, and it, you can do it either way, either taking the flap away with your right hand or pulling the flap away with your left hand. It doesn't matter. Um, what I have to consider is the way I open packages is important because as I open, I want to be sure as I go down my table, I'm never reaching over a previously opened package which is a sterile field. 
So the first thing that I'm going to do is um, to open my gloves here. I'm going to start on the left side of the table since I open flaps away from me. And I'm going to inspect the package, looking at lot number, making sure it's not tampered well, no watermarks, it's completely sealed. So I'm going to peel open my gloves. I can discard the plastic wrapper. And I'm just going to open them and for now leave them at the very end of my table. I'm going to scoot down my sterile supplies just a bit. And my next step is going to be to open my liter of sterile sodium chloride. So I pull the seal off and uh, I'm going to loosen the cap. Since it's a brand new liter, I don't have to lip it and I can see my expiration date is June of 2008. I'm next going to open my package of super sponges here by looking for the corner that I have a flap. And as I open these, I'm going to be very careful that I never reach inside the package. And I can completely pull this flap of super sponges off and I'm going to lay them close to the edge of the table and discard the flap. My next step is going to be to pour enough sodium chloride over those super sponges to moisten them. So I'm going to just hold my bowl four to six inches and being very careful that I don't splash water any place on the table, I'm just going to moisten those super sponges with the sterile saline. Um, I'm going to set my sterile saline off to the side or I could put it back on the uh, bedside table. And if I got any water at all on the overbed table, I need to dry it. And I can actually see that I do have just a drop or two of saline, so I'm going to wipe that off. And I can touch the super sponges by the very edge to line them up. I'm going to again check my package of 4 by 4s and sometimes uh, for a, a novice nurse, it's easy to start the package opening it and then just very carefully peeling away at the flap. And once I get my 4x4 four four open, I'm going to try to slide the gauze closest to the edge of the table that's facing Mrs. Lewis. And if my flap wants to close the way this one did, I'm just going to open it again, give it another tug, and scoot it around to the edge of the table. My drain sponge I'll open next. I'm careful that it doesn't come over the edge of the package, the glue line, and I'm going to slide it right up there. And my last package is going to be the abdominal dressing. Okay, I'm going to take a minute and just be sure that I have all my supplies before I start. And if I need to adjust my table, I can do that. I'll check and make sure that Mrs. Lewis is still doing fine. All right, to open and don my gloves, I'm going to first take the flaps and bend them away from me so the glove package will open easier. I'm going to reach under the flap, open them, and just slightly stretch gently over the tabletop to get the glove wrapper to lay flat. All right, I'm going to uh, glove my non-dominant hand first. So I need to take a step to the left to make sure I don't reach over the right glove. I'm going to reach in, get this glove by the cuff. I'm going to carefully slip it on my left hand. And if I need, I'm just going to pull that down to cover my wrist and my watch. Mm. To be careful to keep my sterile gloved hand now above my waist, and I'm still keeping all my dressing supplies and Mrs. Lewis's wound in my field of vision. Hitchhiker thumbs, I'm going to keep my thumbs apart as I put on my second glove. All right, uh, to clean the incision, I'm going to reach in and pull out the individual super sponges and if they're a little too moist I can just squeeze them right out in the container and I'm going to tell Mrs. Lewis this is going to feel cool and I'm going to open up the sponge so that I can clean a fairly wide area. 
and I'm going to start wiping an inch above her incision to an inch below and I'll be really gentle. If it wants to kind of catch in the sutures, sometimes I have to blot a little bit as I'm going down the incision clean at least one inch below and then I have to carefully bring that contaminated sponge back and I need to drop it into my trash bag from about six inches above my table. I'm going to reach in now and get my second sponge. The first time I cleaned, I cleaned right down the incision line. My second sponge needs to clean the side of the incision farthest away from me. So I'm going to do the same thing, take my sponge, start about an inch below, and this time when I come around the drain, I'm just going to lift the sponge and make one wipe, top to bottom, away from me. Again, come around and drop my sponge into my trash bag. My third sponge needs to clean the area on the side of the incision closest to me. So I'm going to clean again. It might feel just a little cool. I need to be extremely gentle as I clean. And um, the current research recommends that we not dry the tissue. If we leave the incision moist, it's supposed to promote healing. All right, I've squeezed out this sponge. I'm now going to clean around the drain. And that technique is to start the incision clean around the upper side of the drain first and then work out to the flank. So I'm going to gently work at the incision. And I'm really wiping over that drain and safety sponge as I go. And I'm going to come around that incision so I'm not reaching over it. And my last sponge, I'm going to start at the incision and clean the bottom side of the drain working out toward the flank and then again take that used sponge out around the sterile field. My next step is to carefully reach in and get my 4 by 4s and there are two of those in the package so I'm just going to pick them up and I separate them in my hand and I'm going to fold them and just make a little crease here with my thumbnail I clean the incision first, the most sterile area, so that's the one I'm going to dress first, most to least sterile. Uh, my next step is to pick up the drain sponges. I have two of those, and it doesn't matter what direction we put the drain sponges on. I find it's easier if I put them on one sponge at a time, and I kind of flip back the wings on the sponge. And I need to be sure that I get the drain sponge laying underneath the safety pin so it's going to wick up any drainage coming around that Penrose drain. Now, in um, actual clinical practice, I would probably add two or three more super sponges on top this dressing. But since we're in the nursing lab and there was minimal drainage, to save money and uh, economize on supplies, I'm not going to add any additional super sponges. Uh, before I put on the abdominal dressing, I need to remove my gloves because my right hand touched the um, sterile drain and drain pin, which means I have Mrs. Lewis's microorganisms now in my hand, and I don't want to pick up that abdominal dressing, uh, which is packaged with the outside layer uppermost. Because the next nurse who comes along, or Mrs. Lewis, if she touches that abdominal dressing, she would be touching her own microorganisms. And if there is any uh, evidence of bacteria or an infection starting in that wound, it would spread underneath her gown over the top of that dressing. So I'll just take off and dispose of my sterile gloves. And I'm going to reach in now and get the abdominal dressing lift it straight off the package and without touching the edges I'm going to open it up so that the side with the blue line is toward me which is the outermost layer and I'm going to open it up and then just line it up over the incision and I'm going to lay down the abdominal dressing and kind of straighten it out. Um, one edge uh, wants to fold under and I can go in by a corner and just pull out that gauze here on the very edge of that dressing. Once I lay down my abdominal dressing, I can't move it um, or I would be contaminating the field. All right, I'm just going to secure the dressing, tape it down, and uh, I'm 
going to tape it in the fashion of a window pane, so there will be tape on all four edges since she has a drain and this will prevent any drainage from running down her leg. And the very last thing I need to do is to take a piece of tape and put today's date, uh, the time, and my initials on it and then put it right over the center of the dressing so the next nurse will know the exact time that Mrs. Lewis had her dressing changed. And I need to be sure that I write date, time, and initial here on the top of the over the bed table and uh, not on her abdomen, which wouldn't feel um, very uh, comfortable. All right, I've got my tape on. So are you fairly, does that feel fairly comfortable? And she said it does, so I'm going to replace her gown for her today and I'll straighten the covers. I'm uh, going to see if she'd like her head adjusted back up the way it was when I came into the room. I'm going to put up a rail and um, you tell me when you're comfortable. Now I'm going to lower your bed to the lowest position and I'm just going to clean up my supplies. So Mrs. Lewis, I want to thank you so much for your patience and your willingness uh, to let me change your dressing. All right, as I clean up my supplies, um, the paper supplies can go back here in the trash bag hanging on the side of the table. Um, my basin with water in, I really need to empty that in the bathroom uh, so I don't have any moisture in the trash. And um, when I go to remove my trash bag, I need to lift it off the top of the table from underneath that cuff. And I'm going to take some of this tape that I was holding it on the table and just tape it down to the bag. So without touching inside that bag, I need to close it up. And then I'm going to tie it closed and uh, drop it here in the trash can or take it to the dirty utility room. Once I've disposed of the uh, old dressing supplies, I need to wash my hands thoroughly. And then I need to document the date and time I changed the dressing. Uh, she had a small amount of sanguineous drainage uh, coming from the midline lower abdominal incision. Her Penrose drain site was clean, dry. Both the Penrose site and the midline dressing had a one quarter uh, inch of erythema around it. And her incisional edges were well approximated with 10 cat gut sutures. I'll document that I cleansed the incision and the drain site with warm, sterile, normal saline. And I reapplied uh, one four by four, one drain sponge and abdominal dressing and secured it with transport tape. Thank you so much. I wish you the very best as you practice changing a simple sterile dressing. Bye-bye.